In 2003, the average score of Malaysian students in the Trends in International Math and Science study was 510. In 2007, that number slumped to 471, slightly below the global average. But then in October of that same year, Malaysia sent a man to space with the idea that it would instill the interest of young Malaysians to explore new areas of science and technology. Surely our science scores would skyrocket after such an endeavour. It didn't. We scored an embarrassing 426. In just 8 years, we went from being above the global average to the bottom third of the world, and the Ankasa One program did absolutely nothing to arrest the slide. Of course, the good minister will tell you that we've had 24 academic papers published as a result of the program. Now, first of all, I couldn't find any of these mysteriously well-received papers on any of the Google searches I performed, including papers related to the Food in Space experiment, which was meant to taste 9 different Malaysian delicacies on board the ISS. Notice also that the word collaboration is wrongly spelt on this slide. Secondly, the program was estimated to cost 20 million US dollars. That's a very bad return of investment for just 24 academic papers. Now let's compare the American space program that sent Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon to our own ridiculous Ankasawan program. First, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were full-fledged astronauts. Neil Armstrong was an aerospace engineer, a naval aviator, a test pilot, and a university professor. He served during the Korean War. He wasn't an orthopedic surgeon that won a reality TV show and was a part-time model. Secondly, going to the moon was something new. No one had done it before. Going to the International Space Station? That's not new. Thirdly, the Americans launched from Cape Canaveral in America, on home soil. We launched our Ankasa one from Kazakhstan. So after the good doctor high-fied Borat, he got on his rocket and shot off. And instead of saying, Houston, we have a problem, he could have said, Yashimas. Fourth, America had a very good reason to go to the moon. They were at war with the Russians and they wanted to win. And their vision for victory came from the president himself. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Compare that to our own Ankasa One program, where the objectives are not clear and people don't even know of its existence. Finally, and this is the most important, the Americans sent Neil and Buzz to the moon on their own technology. The Saturn V rocket was a rocket capable of shooting to the moon and back. This was a time when the computer that was a million times less powerful than your iPhone was the size of a bungalow. The Saturn V had a giant Made in America sticker on it. No one had gone to the moon, no one could build a rocket to go to the moon except the Americans. Now that's American pride. Our Ankasan one was launched from a Russian rocket, one that we had no engineering or scientific input into designing. For all intents and purposes, we just bought him a very expensive plane ticket to the International Space Station. You see, the only way to get respect and admiration is to have your own technology. Not money, technology. Our pride and joy, the Petronas Twin Towers, were built by Koreans and Japanese. The structural design engineers worked out of New York City and the architect himself was Argentinian. When I look at the Burj Khalifa, I don't think, wow, those guys in Dubai really know how to engineer a building. I think those guys in Dubai have got so much oil money, they just wanted to show off. I admire the architects and the engineers, not the guys who foot the bill with oil money. If you want admiration and respect, you need to own your own technology. Now, we don't have our own technology. How could we when our students score bottom third of the world in science test scores? These students who will finish secondary school in 2014 will go into our universities. And I hate to break it to you, but if you send the bottom third of the world to our universities, you will eventually end up with a bottom third university. That's just a fact of life. If we seriously wanted to encourage our children to do better in science and maths, we could better spend the millions we would on the Akasawan project into something a lot more effective and a lot more cost efficient.